So you've collected your data and now you're ready to create your SPSS file. What I have open here is just a blank SPSS file that you uh, would open when you select the SPSS icon on your computer. You'll notice a few things that I want to point out within SPSS. Across the top you have some items that are will help control the software, so for analyzing uh, reports, things like that. And you also have two tabs that you'll be working in. Uh, you'll be working in the Data View tab. This is like a large spreadsheet, if you will. And then you have the Variable, variable View tab, which is where you're going to input the variable names from your questionnaire. And I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. So over here I have the uh, just a sample questionnaire that you may be uh, used, uh, you may have used in your study. And so what I want to do is I'm going to walk through a few of these items and input the variable names within SPSS. Now this is going to be the first step that you do when you begin entering your data or preparing your SPSS file for data entry. So first you want to make sure you're in the variable view tab, which it's uh, highlighted there, so I know I'm in the right place. And the next thing here on where the row number one, I have a column that's called name. And this is for my variable name. Now the variable names need to be less than eight characters long. So if I look at the first one here, I have one for gender. So I'm going to type in gender. Okay, as I move over, um, this is going to be a numeric uh, value because I'm going to assign value one and two to males or females. So males will be one, females will be two and I'll input that in just a moment. So the label is how is the name that is going to appear in the reports for this variable. So I'm going to say gender. Notice I capitalized that because I want that to appear as a capital uh, letter on there. Now values is where I'm going to assign the associated values for the responses. So for example, if someone selected male I'm going to count that as number one because SPSS uses uh, numerical values to process the statistics. So for the label, I'm going to call that male, and then I'll add that one into my list. For value two, which is going to be assigned for female, and when I have that, I'm going to add that in my list. So now I have any time a one appears, it's going to be equal to male. Any time a two appears, it's going to be equal to female. So I'll select that and add that in. So the next item on here that I want to work with is measure. Now there's three different um, measure or measure types that you could be dealing with. This is your types of variables, if you will. So scale refers to a, um, a scale of numbers. So it could go from one to a hundred, or uh, it could be an infinite scale. Um, ordinal ref ref uh, refers to uh, groups, but they are in some sort of given order. So like age group would be example uh, of that. So 18 to 24, 25 to 32, etc. That's that does have some order to it, but there it's associated with a given group. Nominal is a just a given uh, a given name. There is no order to it, but it's a selection type. So ethnicity would be an example of a nominal variable. So what you want to do is select the correct measure type for each variable you're working with. So in this case, I'm working with gender. I'm going to select nominal because there is no particular ordinal value to a gender response. So I'm going to go to this next column, which is age. And again, I, I know it's a numeric value. For label, I'm going to type in age. And because this is an open entry, there's no values for me to assign here. But for measure, I know that it's going to be scale because age could appear on an infinite scale, theoretically. And I'm going to skip down here to, um, let's skip down to classification. So classification, I'm going to uh, right, obviously classification is longer than eight characters, and so I'm going to abbreviate that gender name as class, or that variable name as class, and then to label it, um, I'm going to go ahead and put the full name, and then for values, I'll begin entering each of these in. So for one, it's going to be freshman, and add, two will be sophomore, and add that one. Three is going to be associated with junior. Four is associated with senior. 
and 5 will be associated with graduate student. I'm going to select OK. And the last thing I need to do is add the measure. Now in this case there is some sort of ordinal value because uh, freshman uh, would be first, graduate student would be last in the sort of um, ordinal uh, positions there in terms of, of uh, grade classification, if you will. So, so what I've done here is I've added three sample variables into here. Um, and now I want to show you ex how to add uh, what would be a common question type that you may appear. These previous ones deal with demographic data. Um, now I'm going to do one that has to deal with uh, maybe question response. So uh, the first variable, let's say, that I'm going to add in would be uh, short for Q01. And that's going to stand for question 1. And again, that's going to be numeric. And the label, I will be question 1. Now, a good practice here might be also to actually add the question uh, name, uh, the question prompt in there. And I'm going to show that on here as an example. That way when you run reports you'll have the actual question that was uh, associated with that information. So the values, um, just like I uh, inserted values for the demographic data, there are associated values here. And so what we have is 1 is equals to strongly disagree. And I'm going to add that. 2 is equal to disagree. I'll add 3 is equal to agree, and 4 is equal to strongly agree. And I'm going to select OK. Now here's where it can get tricky. Because these two are on a given type of scale, uh, you could choose a scale measure as well. But because we're associating the, these data back to certain um, ordinal values in terms of their agreement to a particular statement, you could also select ordinal as well. Both of those would be appropriate responses given a Likert type scale that we have here. So once you've added those, you would continue adding your variables down the list of the, of the data view. Now I want to skip down here to your open response items. Now typically you may not deal with open response in SPSS because it's a um, numerical statistical software. Uh, but you can, if you want to create a database to house your data in, you can certainly add that data in as well. So in here I'm going to uh, create a variable called OR01. And for this case, in the type, I'm going to actually select string. String data is what is used for open response type information. Now, here I'm going to uh, label it open response. And you could also put the question prompt. There are no associated values. And again, this would be nominal data because there is actually no um, ordinal value to it is just uh, string data or text data. So once you've added that variable in, you've created the, um, the variable name for that data and you can enter text data into the field just like you would any other data. Now so let's say for example we have added all of our variables in and we're ready to begin uh, coding and adding data from our um, questionnaires that we've received. So I'm going to go from the variable view here which is highlighted and select over to the data view which is now highlighted. And you'll notice that the variables that I added in variable view are now listed across the top. And so what we have here are our variables will be listed across the top of SPSS and the individual questionnaire responses for each questionnaire that we receive will go down. These are the cases or each individual person that responds. So person 1, person 2, person 3, and so forth. So what I would do is I would simply go up to the top of my questionnaire and if someone answered male for the first question I would type in a 1 for male. For age, I would type, say 24, let's say that. For class, let's say they're a sophomore, and I'll select 2 be for sophomore. And for question 1, let's say they answered disagree, so I would select 2 for that. And ordinal, I just may have some text that I enter. So I would do this for each of the questionnaire items 
that I received. And then once I complete that, I would double check my uh, and even triple check my data sometime to ensure that I have indeed answer uh, that I indeed entered all the data uh, correctly and that there are noted data entry errors um, that are appearing within my data set. So once you've completed uh, this, you've completed your variable setup within SPSS, and I've shown you how to begin entering data in SPSS once you have your questionnaires back that have been you've been completed from the uh, from the participants of your study.